Yaskawa. <laughs> Uh, the first function block is move relative by time and as the name implies this is a relative motion function block. It should not be confused at any point with any absolute motion. Uh, this basically is used for commanding a relative motion from the point where the axis is currently. As you can see there are two main inputs into this function block. The first one being distance. and uh, the distance input basically uses the value that is given to it as a relative move or a relative distance that needs to be moved from where the axis is currently. The second input is time and uh, it uses the time, splits up time into three intervals. Uh, the first one for acceleration, the second one for constant velocity and the third one for deceleration. So the time that is given is split into three to create a trapezoidal velocity profile for the axis. And as you can see here, the area under that trapezoidal uh, profile will be the distance that that axis moves. And like I mentioned earlier, this contains a, an MC move relative inside uh, this function block. This is the uh, calculation that goes inside the MC or inside move relative by time. Uh, time, the total time that's given as an input to the function block is broken into an acceleration T1, uh, constant velocity T2, and uh, deceleration time T3. Uh, the distance is used to calculate the velocity and uh, using velocity we calculate acceleration and deceleration inside the uh, function block. Um, features of this function block are that it can be uh, aborted at any time by another motion function block and uh, also if the user puts in a time less than or equal to zero, uh, an error ID specific to this function block uh, comes up. Uh, looking at implementation here, this is an example where the move relative by time is being used to index an axis. Uh, index distance is 360 units and uh, the 360 units are being uh, commanded over one second. One uh, interesting or important feature of this uh, function block is that it's built based on PLC open specifications of inputs and outputs. So as you can see here, the outputs of this function block are, <coughs> excuse me, clearly in line with the PLC open, with other PLC open uh, function blocks. So you can see these are familiar PLC open outputs the done, busy, active, command aborted, error and error ID. And uh, while the axis is in motion, the busy and the active bits are on. Um, and once the axis is completed, it's motion, the done bit comes on. And in this case, it comes on only for one scan, so it'll be difficult for us to visually verify that. Um, and uh, I can change the time, real time, because in, in the code, in the interlocking code, I am firing the move relative uh, execute after one of the moves is done and there's a little bit of dwell time in there. So I can change it to two seconds and you can see that the busy and the, move and the active bits will be on for two seconds. So it's basically taking uh, two seconds now for completing its move and then indexing after a small dwell. A quick a view of the logic analyzer plot shows the start and stop of this block. Expand it a little bit to show how the trapezoidal profile gets generated. This is the uh, execute bit where the move relative by time function block got fired. And uh, this is the done bit where the move was done. In my code I have a little bit of uh, dwell, uh, half a second dwell and then my next execute gets fired. Uh, you can also see the velocity profile, the trapezoidal velocity profile where you have acceleration for one third of the time given, uh, constant velocity for another third, and deceleration for the last third. So uh, this is useful in applications where uh, time-based moves are need to be commanded. And it's a pretty simple block to uh, implement. It's got just distance and uh, time. 
and it is fired using an execute block, or I'm sorry, an execute input. 